everyone, this is Midnight Mommy. So for today's tutorial, ituturo ko sa inyo yung kinematic equations in free fall. So kung hindi nyo pa napanood yung video ko about uniformly accelerated motion, kung saan ko ginamit yung kinematic equations, I suggest na panoorin nyo muna yun para mas maging familiar kayo kung paano natin ito ginagamit dito sa video na ito. So in this video, i-discuss natin yung object na sinasabi natin na in free fall. So pag sinabi natin free fall, ibig sabihin nun, uh, walang uh, force na nag-act dun sa body except for the force of gravity. So, so for example, meron ka rin ball and then iyahagis mo siya pataas. Okay? So identify natin yung motion nitong ball na to. So let's just say ilo-launch mo siya at a certain speed. Okay, so, so for example, itong ball na to, hinagis natin siya pataas and yung kanyang initial speed is let's say 5 meters per second. So darating yung time na marilish na yung kanyang highest peak. Okay, so let's just say nandito siya, na-reach na yung kanyang highest peak. Okay, doon sa highest peak niya, ang mangyayari dyan, yung final velocity ng ball magiging zero. Okay, so magiging zero siya. So why? Kasi yung object natin, um, magde-decrease yung kanyang speed habang pataas siya. Okay, and then momentarily, mag stop yan. Okay, so dali sa dali lang siya mag-stop before siya bumalik ulit sa ground. Okay, so in this case, mayroon tayong acceleration due to gravity. So, any object kapag nasa ere na siya, okay, always remember na meron yung acceleration due to gravity. So, yung acceleration due to gravity natin, um, in some books, ginagamit sa kanya is AG, yung symbol niya. Pero dito, gagamitin ko na symbol IG. So, itong acceleration na to has a value of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, bakit negative? Kasi ang direction na acceleration due to gravity is always downwards. Okay? So, let's remember na sa kinematic equations, kailangan nating sundin yung mga sign conventions. So, ano itong mga sign conventions na to? Kapag ang movement ng object is upward, so dapat yan ay positive. Okay? Pag upward yung kanyang movement. And then, kapag negative siya, yung gagamitin natin kapag downward yung ating movement. Okay. So, for example, balik tayo dito sa case ng ball na to. So, meron siya acceleration due to gravity na negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, syempre, itong ball na to, babalik siya ulit doon sa pinanggalingan niya. So, bababa siya ulit. Okay. So, pagbalik niya dito ulit sa kanyang initial position, anong mangyayari? Ang final, ang initial velocity niya mula dun sa taas is zero kasi nga momentarily nag-stop. And then, pagbalik niya rito sa same position na to, okay, so ang kanyang VF naman will still become 5 meters per second. Okay, but this time, negative na siya. Okay, bakit negative? Kasi yung direction niya, katulad na banggit ko kanina, di ba meron tayong sign convention? Pababa na kasi yung ball. Okay? So, ayan. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung initial velocity nyo, nung hinagis nyo siya, is the same value katulad ng final velocity niya nung bumalik siya dun sa kanyang initial position. Pero remember, totoo lang to, kapag yung object mo, um, umabot siya dun sa kanyang initial position. Kapag kalimbawang lumampas siya doon, hindi na magkaparehas yung value ng kanyang velocities. Okay? So, yan yung mga kailangan natin tandaan dito sa kinematic equations natin sa free fall. So, kung mapapansin nyo, itong mga equations dito, ito rin naman yung na-encounter natin sa kinematic equations na uniformly accelerated motion. Kasi, remember itong 9.8 meters per second squared, this is actually a constant. So, hindi po yan ang babago. So, dito, pinalitan ko lang yung A ng G. Yan. Okay, so now let's try to use this in a problem. Lahat ng mga examples na gagamitin ko dito, kinuha ko to sa uh, physicsclassroom.com. So, I, again, I invite you to visit the website kasi marami kayo matututunan doon and marami kayo makikita mga materials na makakatulong sa inyo para mas maintindihan yung physics. So, Rex thinks throws his mother's crystal vase vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 25.6 meters per second. Determine the height to which the vase will rise above its initial height. Okay, so, tingnan natin yung given. Ha? So, dito sa problem, sabi niya, vertically upwards, hinagis yung ating vase. Okay, so, hinagis yung vase natin, meron tayong initial velocity na 26.2 meters per second. So, remember, this one is positive. Okay, kasi pataas yung motion ng ating vase. And then, ang hinahanap natin dito is yung height ng vase. Okay, so let's just call that as D, yung vertical height or yung vertical distance. So the D here is unknown. So ano daw yung maximum height na na-reach ng vase um, nung hinakis siya? Okay, so uh, remember, katulad na bagit ko kanina, di ba? 
yung object natin kapag na-reach niya yung kanyang maximum height, okay, ang mangyayari sa kanya yung kanyang final velocity will be equal to zero. So momentarily nag stop yung object. Okay? So at this case, um, walang nabanggit dito sa problem about the acceleration. Pero since alam natin na yung object is nasa ere siya, hinagis siya, automatic na na gagamitin natin yung acceleration due to gravity na equal sa negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Yeah, so kaya medyo tricky yung physics kasi may mga given kasi na um, hindi siya sinusulat dun sa problem. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mong gamitin yung knowledge natin dun sa concept. Okay? Kasi yun, ito yung mga quantities na kailangan isama sa problem. So mga hindi siya stated. Okay, so based dito sa ating given, meron tayong VI, VF, VNG. So pipili na tayo ngayon ng equation. So lahat naman ng apat na equations na to merong VI at saka VF. Okay, so hanapin natin ngayon next yung equation na merong D. Okay, so meron tayo dito ng tatlong equation na merong D. So second, third, at saka fourth. Okay, and then finally meron tayong G. So, pipili ngayon tayo dito, alin dito yung may G. So, itong pang-apat, hindi na natin ito pa consider kasi wala itong G. Okay? And then, meron tayo dito sa taas, okay, parehas may G itong dalawa. Okay? The problem is, itong pangalawa, hindi natin ito pwedeng gamitin kasi wala naman tayong given na time. Okay? So, walang given sa time. So, hindi natin pwede gamitin itong equation na ito. Okay? So, therefore, lang gagamitin natin itong VF squared is equal to vi squared plus 2gd. Yan. So, sa problem na to, hinahanap natin yung distance. So, again, kailangan natin mag-transpose. So, ilipat natin itong si vi squared dito sa left side. So, magiging negative siya. So, vf squared minus vi squared equals 2gd. So, to solve for the distance, i-divide natin both sides of the equation by 2g. Yan. So therefore, yung ating D, ang final equation natin is Vf squared minus Vi squared over 2G. Okay, so now i-substitute na natin yung mga values natin. So D is equal to, ang Vf natin is equal to 0. Okay, so square mo yan, 0 pa rin yan. And then meron tayong 26.2 meters per second. And then square natin. Divided by 2 times yung g natin is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So kung mapapansin nyo dito, makakancel natin yung negative sign. Okay? So magiging positive na siya. So bakit ganon? Kasi remember na yung object is going upward. So ibig sabihin, it only shows na dapat yung distance natin is positive kasi pataas yung motion ng ating base. So kapag ito, in-input nyo sa calculator, ang makukuha nating sagot dito is... 35 meters. Okay, so sulat natin siya rito. So meron tayong 35 meters. Yan. So ito po yung sagot sa ating problem. Okay? So now let's have another example. So look out below drops a pile of roof shingles from the top of a roof located 8.52 meters above the ground. So determine the time required for the shingles to reach the ground. Okay, so again, identify muna natin yung mga given. So, meron tayo ditong distance. Okay, so sabi dyan, nalaglag daw yung roof shingles. Okay, so kung nalaglag siya, ibig sabihin, yung motion ng roof shingles natin is pababa. Okay, so itong distance na to na given, okay, ibig sabihin, downward yung distance na na-travel na ating shingles. So, yung distance na 8.52 meters dapat ay negative. Yan, kasi it's moving downward. Okay, so we are to look for the time required for the shingles to reach the ground. Okay, hanapin daw natin yung time. Now again, itong shingles na to is falling down. So that means meron tayong acceleration due to gravity which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, remember na itong roof shingles na to is nahulog. So na-drop siya. So kung na-drop yan, ibig sabihin yung kanyang initial velocity is equal to zero. So mababasin nyo may mga keywords dito na pwede natin magamit para malaman natin kung ano yung given quantity na pwede natin gamitin sa equation. So ito na yung mga given natin. Meron tayong D, meron tayong G, meron tayong VI. Hanapin natin yung D. Okay, so maghalap na tayo ng equation. So in this case, um, tingnan natin. Ano, hanapin mo natin lahat ng may D. So itong second, third, at saka fourth, lahat sila may D. 
Okay, next, hanapin natin yung may G. So, yung may G dito, itong second and third lang. So, hindi na natin isasama itong uh, fourth one sa choices. And then, next one, hanapin natin kung alin dyan yung mayroong T. Kasi ito yung unknown. So, based dito sa dalawa, so, meron lang T rito is itong second equation. Ayan. So, therefore, ito yung gagamitin natin sa ating problem. So, therefore, ang gagamitin natin ang equation dito, itong pangalawa, itong D is equal to VIT plus 1 half G T squared. Take note na sa given natin, meron tayong VI is equal to 0. So that means, itong VIT na to, pwede na natin itong alisin kasi magiging 0 lang yan. Dahil any number multiplied to 0 is just equal to 0. So pag sinimplify natin to, meron tayong D is equal to 1 half G T squared. So ang hinahanap natin ay itong T squared. Okay, so paano natin ito masasolve? So gawin lang natin, divide natin both sides of the equation by 1 half G. Yan, so para matanggal na ito dito. Yan. So, therefore, yung t squared natin is equal to, okay, simplify ko na lang ha, itong 1 over 1 half is equal to 2, okay, and then d over g. So, since t ang hinahanap natin, that means kailangan natin kunin ang square root ng both sides of the equation. Yan. So, from there, makukuha na natin yung final equation na t is equal to the square root of 2d over g. Okay, so, ngayon substitute natin. So, square root ito ng 2 times yung d natin, negative 8.52 meters. Okay, divided by yung g natin, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, mapapansin nyo makakancel yung unit ng meter and then second squared. Pag in-square root nyo, second na lang siya or s na lang siya. So, ngayon, pag sinolve nyo to, uh, if you input this in your calculator, this one is equal to uh, 1.32 seconds. Ayan. So, yan na po yung sagot natin. Okay. So, I hope nakatulong ito ng malaki sa inyo. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung pattern na ginamit natin is parehas lang din ng technique katulad ng ginawa natin sa kinematic equations na nasa uniformly accelerated motion. Okay? So, ang difference lang dito, yung acceleration natin is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second square. At meron tayong makinonsider ng mga concepts, uh, physics concepts about sa object na nagpo-fall under fall. Okay? So, see you in my next video. So, sa next video ko, i-discuss ko naman kung paano gagamitin yung kinematic equation sa projectile motion.